to perform a good deed, a good action. Then during that good action, in that path, during that deed, performing that deed, shaitan, shaitan, he tries his best, his maximum to divert that individual away from that good deed. That's his biggest enmity between us and shaitan. That's his biggest enmity with us, that he doesn't like at all that any individual that an individual goes towards doing a good deed, practicing a good action, a pious action, the more that a person, he, whatever action it is, if it draws a person closer to Allah, and draws a person near to Allah, the more it draws a person near to Allah, then the more shaitan will try to take that person away from the action. Remember this formula always, that if there's a big uh, point to understand with regards to the success of the hereafter. Because in the beginning he won't do anything. There's passion, there's iman inside the individual. He starts, he embarks on an action. He initiates an action. But, but then shaitan, he instills his wasawis, he injects his whispers. Shaitan, Allah has given shaitan the strength and energy that he is flowing in the body of the human being like the blood. And he's trying his maximum shaitan that through... His influence, he takes that person away from the good action. This will was his thoughts, negative thoughts that come in a person's mind. So when for an action, for a deed, when negative thoughts start to come, then what occurs is that spiritually, that individual becomes weak, spiritually. And his passion decreases, his desire increases, then he goes down, he deflates. He deflates and shaitan wins. Shaitan wins. For example, he starts to pray salah. The individual is praying salah regularly, a lot of salah. And shaitan wants to trap that person or overwhelm that person. So he gives waswasa to that person and he works hard on that person. Shaitan works hard on that person. Asta, asta, slowly, slowly, slowly becomes weak. Weak. So whenever an individual starts a good deed, initiates a good action, then he should be ready that this opportunity will come and I will have to clash and fight with shaitan. In no way or form, don't let shaitan win. Remember this. Otherwise you have lost, you have failed. And then slowly, slowly he'll take you so far away that he won't let you come back. He won't let that person come back because the waswasa, his negative thoughts, overwhelm him, overtake him. And this is a very big, uh, you could say, disease, especially in tasawwuf spirituality. A person who's traveling to Allah, and this is a, a big path that person, he's seeking the path uh, spiritually, he starts to do dhikr, afkar, the first step to attain Allah. You know when he starts, the individual, that's dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah. And the person when he says, okay, let me start. Now I want to get closer to Allah. Alhamdulillah, I want my salah is good. My Quran is good. My recitation is good. My reading Quran is good. And he, I want to start to attain Allah's qurb and nainis. I want to get closer to Allah. And the person tries, makes effort, and he should. And he should. This isn't the case that you should just stay where you are in the status quo. Allah Ta'ala's love is azim. The greatest thing to attain. So you shouldn't just stop where you are and put the brakes on day and night. Keep on trying to promote yourself and progress. So he says, okay, so let's uh, travel. So the first step on the journey is dhikrullah. Dhikrullah. The remembrance of Allah. And dhikrullah, shaitan, he... He's finished when a person does dhikrullah. He says, oh, I've lost out now because he started the journey now. He's embarked on the journey now, this person who's practicing, and he'll arrive to Allah, he'll get close to Allah, and I will lose out, says shaitan. I will lose out. So when the, the believer starts doing dhikrullah, then shaitan, he works hard against that person. He puts full effort against that person who does dhikrullah. And wasawis, shaitani, dangers, uh, khatarat, traps of shaitan, whispers of shaitan that he injects into a person. Now if that individual... Even during dhikr, you can get waswasa and negative thoughts. And the biggest waswasa he will inject into a, a, 
a person who's practicing that, there's no benefit of your dhikr. That's the, the worst thought he will inject into you. What's the benefit of the dhikr you're doing? And this is a big attack of shaitan. He gets up, he goes, so many days you've been in dhikr, so many days. What's the benefit you're attaining for this? Now, there's no enjoyment. I heard that there was enjoyment and so many hadith and Hazrat says this and that. But yeah, I can't... Uh, so see anything beneficial he makes that person think that shaitan's waswas I'm telling you these are the waswasas of shaitan and I'll tell you the answer for this as well alhamdulillah that this is how he deflates a person and makes him go down what's the benefit of your dhikr say shaitan there's no benefit you're wasting time then he puts another injection into the mind there's no enjoyment in this dhikr there's no taste in this your thoughts are going somewhere else your thoughts are wandering your eyes are closed you're trying to concentrate you're doing this what's the benefit of all this shaitan makes you think oh just leave this let's do some other action of the deen Let's, and he'll show you another path rather that he won't take him to the other path so let me leave this and he's just showing him empty paths do talawa, do other uh, pious actions and he's showing him other alternative things because he wants shaitan that this individual I want to divert him away from dhikr because this is the practice that will take him close to Allah which you've heard in the Quran فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ Allah says so quickly a person progresses in the path the hair he remembers Allah Allah says I also remember you subhanallah so qurb has a high status and uh, the shaitan makes that believer think oh there's no enjoyment I'm not enjoying dhikr leave dhikr so he injects this waswasas these all the wasawis of the shaitan that he attacks a person with so what do we need to do when we are facing this dilemma first of all we should think firm solid that the path that I've embarked on the whole Quran is filled with this. The whole the hadith are filled with this. Allah Ta'ala is saying, the Holy Prophet has announced, what a great thing, la yashqa. Allah says, what a great statement. That this is such an action. The dhikr of Allah, that any individual, when he does dhikr, is never he will lose out. No way will he lose out if he does the dhikr of Allah. Whoever sits in the majlis, who arrives, what a big guarantee. And shaitan, what guarantee does he give? Will tell you, no, there's no enjoyment, there's no taste, uh, it's not good. But Allah, what's his guarantee? That if you go and sit and attend this majlis, and take part, la yishka, then you will never get up with a negative in your account. So who should we listen to? Shaitan or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So first thing, listen carefully and clearly. Which is that enjoyment, having a good feeling, emotions, taste, I want to do dhikr, I want to feel this and that and high. Yes, fine. These things are there. And mashallah, there is enjoyment of dhikr. That when an individual, as a Mulana Rumi, Ramadan said that when I recite the name of Allah, when I remember Allah's name, that my whole body is like it's melting and it's feeling sweet. So there is enjoyment. There is taste. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. But if me and you can't feel that, then you don't lose hope and give up. Yes? So what's the reason for that? And the reason for that is this. That, that for example, you've got nice sweets in front of you like gulab, jamun, laddu, and you get these different sweets and you've got the box of sweets in front of you and you're eating that and you're enjoying that. And you say that there's no enjoyment in the gulab jamun. And then you pick the other and the laddu. I can't feel the taste. And barfi, this is not good. It's like bitter a little bit. No. That, that there's another person who's tasting those sweets and the other person doesn't realize the taste. What we see here is that that person is sick. He is unwell. This person's unwell and his taste, he hasn't got that sense of taste. He's lost his taste. As soon as he cures himself, becomes healthier, then he'll also enjoy those foods just like the other person who's healthy. So, dhikrullah, there is enjoyment. And inside us, that there's so much uh, impurities of sin and shaitaniyat, etc. It doesn't eliminate straight away. So when a person regularly, consistently, without any precondition, when he keeps on doing dhikr, dhikrullah, 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 alhamdulillah, that maqam will arrive, that he'll start to enjoy dhikrullah as well. That ultimately will arrive. Yeah, but we don't want to wait for that. We say immediately we want to see the benefit. So the first thing is shaitan makes you think, leave the dhikr. There's no enjoyment. So a straightforward answer for that is, the dhikr of Allah that we do, Remembering Allah Hazrat Mulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi Sahib Rahmatullahi Rahmatullahi He told us this That he was a Hakim The physician Of the Sawf He said a beautiful thing The first and foremost He said understand this point That dhikr Allah When a person performs it You don't do dhikr for enjoyment You don't do it for good emotions You don't do it for kashf 
to attain visions and karamat or miracles or to become a pious person. If these are your thoughts, then better than this, then you, you failed even in the beginning. The one, one maqsad objective reason, purpose to do dhikr is what? Is what? That Allah has ordered us, instructed us. Fadhkuruni, Allah says. Ya ayyu ladheena amnudhkurullah dhikran kathira. Allah says, pray salah, give zakah, do hajj. And behind that, there are many benefits for Hajj, for Umrah, for reading Quran, for Talawat. So many benefits of each of these actions, we can't even imagine. Same well as instructed that, perform my dhikr. Remember me, what's the difference between dhikr and the other actions? What's the difference? Is that all our mal Allah has just said, pray Salah, perform Hajj, go on Umrah, or do this. But dhikrullah, what does Allah tell us about dhikrullah? Wadhkurullah kathiran kathira, Allah says, kathira. Wherever the name of dhikr comes, Allah Ta'ala says, Allah hasn't just said do dhikr, Allah says, remember me abundantly, high quantity. So this is a beautiful, unique. Imagine the rewards Allah has given for dhikr. La Yashka Allah says that there's no way you will lose out if you perform my dhikr. For example, you come to the majlis, you say, I'm not enjoying, I'm not feeling the taste. But Allah says that a person who attends the majlis of dhikr, he never leaves empty handed. So it's a beautiful, unique point I'd like to share with you. That when Allah says that you will never incur a loss, what does that mean, incur a loss? For example, yes, a person, how does he not incur a loss? That it's not just for one thing here, that Allah Ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala hasn't just said that, that you will lose out due to this, or you won't leave empty handed, or you won't incur a loss. Rather, in all of this, all of the aspects of life are covered. That if an individual, if he is a devoid of good health, or if there's an individual who doesn't have children, or if somebody is overwhelmed by um, distress and sadness, or somebody is overtaken by illness, or somebody's got pressures of business, or somebody's got other difficulties and problems in life, all sorts of issues and problems, whoever comes to this majlis will not leave in a more negative fashion than he arrived. Subhanallah. How much Allah's majlis covers all aspects of life in which me and you are sat alhamdulillah, this gathering of dhikrullah. Yes? For example, I'm extremely ill. I'm unwell. And what's the first cure? Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that immediately go and attend a dhikrullah majlis and go with this niyyah that Allah ta'ala have come to this gathering for this reason. So Allah, please eliminate my sickness. The pious predecessors have said that whatever, whatever you require, your desire, then make near for that and attend the majlis. Yes, that my children, they're sick, or my children are upset, there's sorrow, there's distress, or this problem, or I'm losing out this way, that way. It's stated, make near and sit in the majlis, Allah, I'm sat in this gathering for this reason. Allah Ta'ala eliminate this problem of mine, or issue of mine, Allah guarantees that inshallah, you will not lose out, you will attain what you require. You will attain what you require. Yes, so what a great, great guarantee that every aspect or pillar of life that Dhikrullah Majlis covers and Akhirah is there for sure. Jannah will be attained for sure. Forgiveness for sure will be attained. Subhanallah. That's automatic. For example, for example, Allah has given us this and somebody morning and evening he's got this majlis of dhikrullah somebody only once a week comes to the majlis of dhikrullah somebody once a month comes to the majlis somebody once in the year in the form of the ijtama gets the majlis of dhikr so look at the difference whoever gets this every day then every day his sins are being eliminated every day his darajat are being elevated every day the rahmah mercies of Allah descending person who gets it once in the week then after a week he attains this person he has to wait one week for this so this is the sawal the question the akhirah that so himself he lost out that person. Yourself you did not uh, partake of this gathering. Allah said, I gave you the path, I gave you the, uh, the method and you were miserly, you didn't attend the majlis. Shaitan, he grabbed hold of you, he controlled you. So it's our loss that there's an ocean, there's a river flowing past us and we don't take the water and drink it, we are thirsty. We're thirsty, we just drink a glass, we're satisfied, that's enough for me. Okay fine, that's all you'll get in the akhirah, in the hereafter. The Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, what a great message he gave to us. That when Rasulullah alayhi went on Miraj and he gave a message, that tell your ummah, or Rasulullah alayhi salam, that Jannah, paradise, it is a very fertile soil in paradise. Very fertile. What a great statement. 
So if you, in this soil of paradise, and you desire that your mansions are constructed and you're going to come here to Jannah paradise, then work and toil on earth in that dunya where you are sent and living where you will do dhikr and the work for your construction, the palaces, the mansions will be constructed in paradise. Obviously, that if you've got beautiful palaces and rivers and oceans and ease, and who are these people in paradise? These are those who are doing dhikr all the time in the world. That's why I said to you, Allah Ta'ala says, that I don't benefit from your kathir dhikr. Allah says, Allah says, I have no need for your kathir dhikr, but I had so much love for you, and you are the ummah of my mahboob, so I wanted, Allah Ta'ala says, that I said to you to do kathir dhikr, that the more you do dhikr in abundance, the more your jannah will be manufactured. So today you have mansions, palaces, why are you looking around? So here the dunya is finished now, and you cannot get promotion again. Your life's gone, this is how much you constructed, that's it. One individual I saw in the, in the dream, he had passed away. Allah Ta'ala showed me I had love for somebody. And I saw him. And he used to do amal after Maghrib. He used to sit down, do talawat of Quran, recite Quran. He used to do different actions. He didn't sit in the majlis. He didn't come to dhikr and sit down. So one day, uh, he came in my dream. And I saw in the dream there was a place. And it wasn't that beautiful. You know, like we have council houses. You know, like a state like a council house and he sat outside there leaning against the door and I said uh, I said his name Assalamu alaikum I said you are sitting here and I looked at his house and he said yes uh, that's it that's my house this is all I've got this is where I am this is where I am I said I'm surprised I said this man the always this is his house forever that's it and then my eyes opened what did I realize but I learned that that's how much he manufactured. He, all he got was a council house there. The amount he worked hard. And he didn't go beyond that. He didn't go beyond that. Tell me. So if he had gone beyond that, Alhamdulillah, and he tried hard work. And what should he try hard on? What should we work hard on? Make effort. The thing that Allah Ta'ala has instructed in the Quran. Not that uh, we follow some peer saying, some uh, person saying, no, we have to follow the Quran's instruction. The Quran is telling us this. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu dhkurullah dhikran kathira. The Quran is saying that do dhikr kathir. Allah is saying for this reason. Allah says, remember me. Allah doesn't have need for our dhikr. That that individual human being who does dhikr, as soon as he does dhikr, then his palace start to be constructed in the hereafter so this is the material that we're giving we're forwarding on we say subhanallah the tree is rooted planted we say subhanallah the tree is planted further up where are we going to go another dream I'll tell you I saw my mother-in-law and uh, she passed away and in that dream my mother-in-law she had a quality mashallah that she had a lot of love for the dhikr of Allah extreme love for the dhikr of Allah and the dhikr of Allah she used to spend money when she heard the name of the khanka for the khanka hey give this money to the khanka give this for the khanka give this one the whatever she had she kept on giving for the khanka she had extreme a lot of love for dhikr mashallah the rest like you know women uh, with salah etc is the same but she passed away and I saw her in the dream subhanallah first time I saw jannah so beautiful Jannah, high, high trees, tall trees, and such open fields. And in there, there was a tree, from the shade of the tree, she was coming out. Subhanallah. And I saw, and I, I looked at her closely, I said, this is Amaji. And I said, Assalamu alaikum. I said, MashaAllah. She said, yeah, this is all mine that you're seeing. Subhanallah. These are true dreams, two true dreams I'm sharing with you. I said, this... I was, uh, subhanallah, I said, your amal, there's such amal, such beautiful jannah trees. And suddenly in my heart came a feeling, and that, that showed, uh, showed me that this is all the barakah of the dhikr of Allah that I was looking at, subhanallah. So brothers, this is not something to be shocked and dismayed about. The dismay and the shock is that person who Allah Ta'ala has mentioned these things in the Qur'an, that if you do these actions, you'll get this in the hereafter. And according to that, if we start practicing in our life here now, yes, it's nothing to be shocked about. Allah is saying in the Qur'an here, that do dhikr kathir, high quantity. Allah Ta'ala doesn't say, don't read, pray, salah, don't recite Qur'an. We have to do all of these things. We have to do all of those things. But Jannah, that you have to construct and manufacture, Yes, Allah has given us tariqa, method, that the more you practice, the, it's up to Allah, He's the owner, the creator. Allah says, if in Jannah paradise, you want to decorate it and make it nicer, then don't regret tomorrow. Allah says, I've given you both actions. One is the council house, I've given you one extreme. He was sat there and he never used to sit in the, the dhikr gathering. And the, the, the pious lady, she did dhikr kathir. 
Yes, her ibadah worship was normal. But, mashallah, she did dhikr kathir and her trees were planted. This hadith of says, subhanallah, the trees planted. The trees planted. So, mashallah, an insan, the human being. I remember there was an Englishman, he became a Muslim uh, in my company. And he was a new Muslim. Uh, and when I told him about dhikr, then I told him hadith about dhikr. I said, when a person does dhikr Allah, then a tree is planted. He stood up. He said, is that the case? He said, exactly like that, Sheikh. I said, yes, it's like that. Exactly. And I told him the hadith, obviously 100% it's according to the hadith. Then he stood up. He said, subhanallah. Then they all have so many trees and so many modes of transport with the hands. He said, I'll have so many gardens. And he put his hands out. I said, yes, Allah will give you many gardens. He had yaqeen, certainty on this. And he stuck himself to the dhikr, a day to dhikr. This is one normal person, a new Muslim reaver. Look at us. Look at us, fathers, grandfathers, ancestors, and we don't have akal. We don't understand that what do we need to do, which amal, how much should we do, which amal. Until till now, we don't have the awareness, the understanding that which amal and which style, how much we should perform, that will give us akhirah. That everything we're doing, we're doing for the akhirah, isn't it? Salah, we pray for the akhirah, isn't it? For the hereafter. Maghrib salah, we prayed for the akhirah, for the hereafter. Zohar salah is for the akhirah, we did it. Fajr salah, for the akhirah. So at least we should have this much sense, whatever amal we're doing, then the hereafter, how much portion will we get of reward? Well, how much portion? Fajr salah in the morning, you pray. Everyone's gone. But some people, they sat down and remained, and after that did dhikrullah, and they were immersed in dhikrullah. So Allah says, subhanallah. Look at that. Yes, and what are they doing? What they're doing, they're doing the amal according to the way that Allah has been explained in the hadith. They sit down after Fajr Salah, they do dhikrullah, and then after that, the sun had to rise. Then the sun rises, then they say subhanallah, and they get up, they pray two raka salah nafil. They go, and then for that, so many hadith, just one hadith I'll share with you. As soon as they're free, from uh, above Allah announces, this is Sahih al Bukhari hadith, that you've done this action now, you prayed Fajr Salah. And you did the action that I explained to you, Allah said, instructed. You could do anything else you want to do at that time. Thousands of other amal. But you did the amal that is beneficial at that specific moment in time. Allah said, you did the amal that I prescribed to you, that prescription, that this is the amal that will give you benefit. You did the amal. You didn't reject it. You didn't reject it. There are the amal you could do. But this time you did the amal, Allah said, that I like, that I had given you reward for. Was the amal that when you do this deed... And all the other amal, you leave at that time, you come to the amal of dhikrullah. According to the dhikrullah, the reward Allah says, of Sayyid, you'll get that. What is that? A hajj and an umrah, thawab reward. You'll get. Allah Azza wa said this, the sahaba was sitting, did say once, three times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, one hajj umrah, one hajj and umrah, one hajj and umrah. Sahaba Akram, noble companions, they looked. They uh, looked, and what a great guarantee, but we don't want to do the amal. Shaitan makes us do other actions, or he takes us away, he takes us to other amal. No, brothers, amal do that amal that the Quran has prescribed to us, that at this moment in time, the day, do this deed to get this benefit. Ramadan amal, they'll give you benefit in Ramadan. Morning salah will give you benefit in the morning. Zohar salah will give you the benefit at Zohar time. The tasbih of the morning will give you benefit in the morning. The dua of the morning, the Allah Ta'ala Zambi Zambi prescribed this for the morning, is give you benefit in the morning. The or salai won't give you the benefit. So this is the system that we need to learn. So dhikrullah is such a great asset, such a great method, that it's a machine to manufacture your hereafter. And it is kathir. Keep on printing, keep on producing. So what we need to do is learn dhikrullah from a sheikh of waliyallah that we can do all the time. And such a dhikr that our work of the dunya doesn't stop. Business is running, children you're sitting with, wife, house, family, your occupation keeps on running. But your dhikr should also continue in parallel. That is the way of coming into dhikr. Kathir, so Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq. So I was requesting is that shaitan, he stops us from doing good things. He makes us weak. But dhikrullah that we're doing, why are we doing dhikrullah? So that, because it's Allah's order, instruction. That's it. We're not doing it for good taste, good feeling, good emotions. So don't leave this action. If you leave dhikr, then shaitan is one. You're lazy, negligent, doesn't matter. Keep on going. Don't care. Because there's a guarantee behind this action. Whatever situation you're in, your eyes are closed, you don't feel like it, the tasbih is turning. Even if you do this much, that you take the tasbih and you sit down, you're feeling drowsy, sleepy, you can't do anything. The whole thawab of dhikrullah you will attain. You will attain. So that's what we need. What else do we need? You're feeling sleepy, drowsy, but don't leave the tasbih. And you give your full time. You leave that saying, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, and leave it like people do. 
they're doing talawat, you're reading Quran, you're feeling sleepy, the hukum is leave talawat. Yes, because other words may be uttered. And it's shara masla, it's a shari masla, that don't do talawat that time when you're feeling drowsy, you're sleepy. Yes, same way food is ready, you're eating food, it's salah time. The first eat, complete the food, then pray salah. Don't leave that, don't miss it. But same way, dhikrullah was the instruction. That even if you're drowsy, sleepy, continue to do dhikrullah, subhanAllah. Why? Because even then it will give you benefit. Even then it will give you benefit. Even then you will be included in the list of the dhakreen and not the ghafilin. Even though at the time of sleeping a person becomes ghafil. But Allah Ta'ala says, subhanAllah. Imagine what is the reward. That the biggest negligence, what's the place of laziness most of all? Tell me. The place of laziness most of all is our mattress, our bed where we go to sleep. That's the place, isn't it? Where a person's lazy and he gets laid back, he goes to the mattress, oh, let me go to sleep. Allah Ta'ala says that there, that, that place of laziness in your mattress as well, those who do dhikrullah even there, then they will go into paradise laughing and smiling. So what a great, great maqam and daraja for dhikr. Even at that time, Allah has given reward for the dhakreen at the time when they're going to sleep. You're closing your eyes saying, Allah, 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 Allah. He's going towards the sleep. The high maqam that he will enter, smiling, laughing. How? That subhanallah, I've got no pain, it's so easy. I didn't even know it was the pain of resurrection or accounting or judgment. He'll be smiling, laughing. Well, otherwise, why will he laugh? He'll say, oh, I didn't even realize the day of judgment. What was the barakah of that? Due to the barakah of dhikrullah. So brothers, we should do dhikr, inshallah, try hard, work hard. I should try hard, you should try hard. So these few words that came into my heart, my mind today, I'll share with you. Don't be lazy. There should be no way laziness in anything. And no amal be lazy. What is that? Because that's shaitan who's stopping you. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Whatever situation you're in, keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Bismillah ar-Rahman Alhamdulillah ربنا اعتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الغشر ہمارے ایک ساتھ ہیں بندے کی ان کی نانی کے انتقال ہوئے ان کے لئے دعا فرمائیں اللہ تعالیٰ ان کی مقفت فرمائیں جنت میں آلہ دجا نصیب فرمائیں ان کے لباقین کو اللہ صبر نصیب فرمائیں وصل اللہ تعالیٰ علی خیر خلقہ محمد وعالی وسائل جمعین بی رحمتی کجیب اللہ محمد